Alright, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning and we hope that everybody has come for the purpose of hearing God's word read and I hope that what we read this morning and what we try to say will be a blessing to each one and if nothing else it will cause you to uh, open your Bibles sometime and try to restudy some of these things and something that I read from God's word will stick in your mind and it'll be a blessing to you and we give us all our to uh, walk closer to the Lord. We want to study some this morning in the book of Matthew. And, uh, we've heard some of these read here, hadn't been too long, but in chapter 18 is where we want to read our first scripture in verse 1. Uh, and verse 1 of chapter 18, we see the disciples uh, coming to Jesus and uh, they were questioning him about some things and uh, asking him about some things and they had already had some discussions uh, over in the 20 chapter, I mean Matthew 20 about who was going to be the greatest and who would sit on one side and on the other and uh, they were all always uh, seeking some knowledge and sometimes I wonder about their uh, their salvation. I wonder sometimes about what kind of condition they were in and what all this. But anyway, this here conce is concerning a uh, the little children. And we have, uh, Brother Larry has mentioned uh, just I think a couple weeks ago about some of the little children and and uh, about uh, where they go and uh, he used his the verses uh, are with David and his child, and we want to just make a few comments on uh, on this in, the, in according to this. But in verse one, Jesus uh, uh, explains the greatness of the little children, and he says, "At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven?'" Now you know, like I mentioned while ago, they. Uh, they are they're 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 asking Jesus these things and and they're they're concerned to a degree but yet and another thing they want to they want to find out some other stuff too but uh, about uh, him them coming to and requesting if they could if they would guilt if if he would let them sit on one side when he was in his kingdom and, and the other one on the other one and in one place there, I believe it is in Mark, his mother came uh, with them, and she was the one that done the asking. And uh, you, if you if you study uh, their their uh, mother, she was she was Jesus's mother's sister, and so she came along with them and to encourage them and to maybe uh, help Jesus to understand what they were wanting, and they were wanting to know if they could sit on his side. But now Jesus told them, he said, it's not mine to give. But anyway, in this here, we see that Jesus, uh, when they asked who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, you be changed, you be saved, and become as little children. So here, the way I understand the scripture and what Jesus says, this little child here has got something already that these people didn't have because he said, unless ye become converted as this little child. Now, it's, I believe, uh, and I to me, it, it, it's clear that uh, when, we're, when, when, when we're concerned about a little baby dying, I believe that there is a provision, there is a covering for that child until it comes to the age of for, uh, learn bad from wrong or, or, or uh, anything like that. But he says, here, verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a little child, you shall not in, enter into the kingdom of heaven. So there's got to be something done by people that have reached the age of accountability, and that is that they've got, they've got to be uh, they've got to be saved, and and they know the difference between wrong and right. 
Now, this little child, as the way I understand it, is innocent of anything wrong, even though David said here about he was born of his mother's womb speaking lies or, or, or into that nature. When a child is born, it's born with the seed of Adam in it, and it's sinful. But the thing of it is, it's not responsible for its actions until it understands what is wrong from right. And, and so he said here, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now I want to turn, if you would, with me this morning to, to uh, Matthew 19 and 13. Matthew 19, 13. <clears throat> Verse uh, 13 of Matthew 19. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked him. So we see here that what the disciples, the disciples has, has not learned about the little children in the way that they should be because if they had it, they would not have rebuked uh, Jesus for, for uh, uh, or the, the children and he, uh, they rebuked the parents for bringing them also. And it says, there, then there were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and, he, and the disciples rebuked them. So there was, there was a thing that the disciples did not understand that the parents wanted for the children. And it's the same way that the, the mother and, the, and the of Zebedee, or the, father, or the, son, the wife of Zebedee, come with his, her two children and asking Jesus for this thing. And he said, it's not mine to give. But here, Jesus, but Jesus said here in this, suffer or allow little children and forbid them not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying this morning to me, and I, and I may be out, uh, I, may, I may not be understanding all I, but he's saying to me this morning that these children, these children are uh, 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 of such of the kingdom of heaven. They are in a condition, if they die in this condition, that they go to heaven. Now, uh, and, and you, you, but anyway, we'll get on with this. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And so this morning, I feel like that we, we, we should understand or we should think upon this as all of the little children that has ever died in the world from the time they were born to a certain age, that they were in sin. They were carrying the seed of sin in them, but did not understand what sin was. And so, I, again, I want to read something else to you this morning. In Mark's Gospel, in 10, Mark 10, 13. Mark 10 and verse 13, and he says here about the same thing, but he says, And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. Here again is the touching. And the reason why that they didn't want him to touch them, the, the, the disciples are because, listen, they, they, would, they would carry those children into the temple and the priest would probably sprinkle some water over them or something like that and he would get the glory. But anyway, listen here that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them, their parents. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer or permit, as he said, well, go the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And so 
this morning to me these scriptures are saying that this little child uh, is an example this little child Jesus is using to show the condition that they must be in and you know a little child that is born uh, a lot of people says that, that they don't sin I mean they sin because they cry for something listen they cry because they're hungry they cry because they're hurting they got gas they got stomach aches but listen as far as them sin willfully sinning they don't know the difference between uh, not sinning and sinning and I don't I, to me this morning uh, uh, we're going to use the the, uh, the scripture in a minute about David and 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 what he said about it and it's uh, it's over in the second Samuel I will read that just a minute in second Samuel and you know the scripture and you've heard it the second Samuel 12 verse 15 I believe it is 15 2 second Samuel 15 <clears throat> And, uh, and, and here's where Nathan, and Nathan departed into his house, and the Lord struck the little child. This was, this was David's child that, that he had uh, 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 gotten uh, from Uriah's wife, uh, and, and he had him killed. But anyway, uh, Nathan had told him that, that, that the child would die. And, and uh, he says, And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought the Lord for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of the house arose and went to him to raise to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the uh, seventh, seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was alive, yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will we then vex him himself if we tell him that the child is dead? And when David saw that the servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required they set bread before him, he did eat. Then said the servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou hast fast, thou didst fast, and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise up and eat bread. And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And so David, in his, in his knowledge and his closeness to God, realized that the child had left and went to Abraham's bosom because uh, Abraham's bosom was still in effect. And, and he knew that the child could not come back to him, but that the child was all right. And so... Uh, this is one of the things that I would like to read to you. And then in 2 Samuel, again, I want to read something else to you. In 2 Samuel 19, uh, to show you something different. 2 Samuel. Second Samuel 19. Here in, in this word that Joab, where that uh, uh, Absalom was the other child of David's. And it was in verse 19, 1, and it was told, Joab, behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. Now, Absalom was the one that tried to destroy David. He, just, he, 
he he done everything he could do to get David killed and to try to kill him before that he could become king. And and verse two, and the victory that day was turned into mourning and unto all the people, for the people heard say that day how that the king was grieved for his son. And here here. Joel is all upset because of David's actions and that he had he had a, such a love for him and the, and the people and, and, and uh, Absalom tried to destroy them. And the people got them by stead that day into the city as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, my son Absalom. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the face of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the life of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. And why I wanted to read this was, to show you the difference, the difference in how much David loved Absalom. But there never was anything said about where Absalom went and that he could go with him, but it did with the baby child. And so this morning, I think that is a, a, a good evidence this morning that David knew where the child was, was going. He had that... He had that fellowship with the Lord and that understanding of the Lord that the child was all right, but Absalom, Absalom was not, Absalom was his enemy. And so uh, I think this, this should be one of the things that we, we should consider if, if when we think about a newborn that's, or one that's, I, 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 I can't say one year old, two year old, what, but when that child is an infant and, and as Jesus took the, in one place here, he took the little child, the infant, he called it, and held it in his arms and blessed it. And this morning, people, uh, uh, Jesus don't bless like that uh, with sinners and all that until they, uh, after they came to the, the knowledge and understanding of what sin is. And so, <clears throat> again, I want to I get back to our lesson in, in uh, 18, <clears throat> chapter 18, verse uh, okay, <clears throat> but let's look at uh, verse 4 again as he talks about these children. And whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that's putting a greatness on the child. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, it says... He receiveth the Lord Jesus Christ. He, this little child here, to, to, in, in, in this right here, he says, Whoever, whosoever receiveth one of these little ones or, or loves them or helps them or, or takes care of anything, any problem they have, he says, such a, such a little child in my name receiveth me. And this morning, I feel like that this is, he's talking about Christians receiving other Christians because notice what he says here in verse 6, but whosoever offendeth one of these little ones which believeth in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he would drown in the depths of the sea. Now here he says that, that, that offends one of these and people will look at this and say, well, it's because what he says here offends one of these little ones which believe in me, and he's saying that little child is saved. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily because, listen, if you'll read these things here and, and read this scripture, uh, in, the, in the first verse here, or in the second verse, and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Now here, in verse 6, it says, but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. So there were more than one there. And that and he's talking about any of the little children that are at, not at the age of accountability, but are still they're still saved because they don't know they don't know good from bad and they're under his protection. They're that 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 
that protection is in a in a sense the same way as a lost person here upon this earth and listen that that is that God will watch over until his time comes for him uh, to be called or whatever but there is this is this is what I understand this about this morning and he says in verse 7 woe unto the world because of offenses or causing to sin for it must needs be that offenses come but woe to that man by whom the offense come. And so he's saying this morning, if we, uh, if we offend a little one, a little child, and we teach him to steal, we teach him to cuss, we teach him to do this and teach him to do that and teach him all these things, listen, we're in bad shape. And if we don't try to raise up our children in the way that they should go and bring them into the house of the Lord and to, and to even have prayer with them in, in, in our homes and read to them the Bible until they can get to the age of accountability to where they can read it and understand it, listen, we are offending those children. And, and it's, it's a sad state of affair because we're guilty. And we need to, uh, you know, we need to think about these things and I know I've raised, I've raised some of the, some children, and I know I, I missed a lot of opportunities that I could have said something to them or, or showed them something by even with my actions. And so this morning, this is something that we, I, that we need to think about. But he says here in verse 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee, it is better for thee to enter into life halted or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And these things here are, it, it, it's anything that offends a person or if you are an offender to a person, and, and this is what I believe he's talking about here this morning when he's using the hand and the feet and all this. Hey, a lot of people say, well, it's the feet where, that you, where you can take yourself and walk or hands and you can touch all this. But listen, it's talking about an offender that offends themselves and little children or anyone that is not saved. If, you, if, if, if you've got these problems, then you're in danger because, listen, uh, if you have that desire in your heart to, to cause someone to sin, or offend, and that's what offend means is to cause them to sin, then listen, there's there's something lacking in you because you know a grown person knows that a little child needs a, needs help and bringing them up. And here he says, if the hand or the foot or all this uh, in a, uh, is offense to you, you need, you need to, and he says cut it off, but he, you need to control it. You need in your life if you're if you're an offense to someone, you need to go to them because it mentions it in here about uh, if 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 a brother offends you, you go to him and, and talk to him, and if he won't listen, you take a friend with you, and and you and you, uh, you you try to get it out, and if they won't if he won't listen to that, you take it to the church, and so that's that's what he's talking about here. So so here again. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. And it's, these things are sound silly, but the thing of it is, you have to have a, it's got a spiritual meaning to it. It's not a, a fleshly thing, but it's a spiritual thing because you have a spiritual eye like you have a fleshly eye. But he says, if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye than rather having two eyes and to be cast into hell. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Amen. For I say unto you that in heaven, now listen to this, in heaven their angel does always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. And listen, this morning we have, an, I, I believe with all my soul we have a guardian angel plus he said that always beholds my face. We have Jesus Christ, our Savior. And when we pray, we're to pray to Jesus Christ. And he beholds the face of the Father. And he tells them, uh, the Father, that 
I am his child, that my blood has been applied to my sin and covered them. And that's the same thing that he's talking about here. These little these little these little ones always have their angel there in heaven, and he says they're always beholding the face of the Father. Amen. And so, you know, this 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 to me makes makes sense that the little ones that he's talking about are those that are not that are not capable of discerning between bad and good even though they're born with the seed of Adam. And you know, you just think about this this morning, all of the children in this world that's been aborted by fleshly hands, can you imagine, can you imagine the, the punishment for them? Because uh, uh, that's, that's and, and, and those that believe that that little child that was aborted, or that little child that lived four or five days and he died, and I have a, I had a, I had a, a brother like that. But listen, uh, they, 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 they believe that, that they can't, they can't go to heaven because there's no, there's no place for in their life for uh, salvation. But I, I believe this morning, people, that. Uh, that there is there is a, there is a a time a claim that God takes care, He protects. They're not guilty until they reach an age where that they understand the difference between bad and good, and that's when that seed of Abraham takes root and starts to grow into the body. Because listen, it ain't it's not long. Uh, especially now with all the education and everything, children grow up fast and they realize and they come to the knowledge that, listen, it's wrong to steal, it's wrong to use bad language and things like this, and, and they, they can indulge in it pretty quick. But the little infants, the little babies, uh, I think that the Lord takes care of them until such time as uh, they have, a, uh, have an opportunity to grow up. So this is this is some of the things this morning that I wanted to, to bring to you, and I I I I, I, I did this because uh, I was concerned about it. I was worried about it, and I've been worried about it for for a long time, and I've been thinking about it, and uh, uh, I just want to bring this out to you, and maybe maybe it'll it'll comfort, or it might be it might be a comfort to some that hears it, uh, and that and and you can. Look, at, look into the, the matter and, and pray about it and ask the Lord to help you see it in a greater way because uh, I think I believe that what God's word was and I read his, his, his word that uh, he loved those little ones and he said do not forbid them to come and so with that uh, I'll close the lesson and, and thank you for listening and ask that you would pray for us and study study about this and other things and and just just uh, pray about it that you uh, might understand it and I might understand it in a greater way. And if I'm if I'm misled in anything, well, I pray the Lord will, will help me with it to show me that uh, we're wrong. Thank you all so much.